Good morning again. This is Dave, Bowling Green Presbyterian Church. This is the third and final in the series of God's Promises to Man. And we'll get started on the lighter side. An elderly man was stopped by the police around 2 a.m. and is asked, where are you going at this time of the night? The man replies, I am on my way to a lecture about alcohol abuse and the effects it has on the human body as well as smoking and staying out late. The officer looked at him, then asked, Really? Who is giving that lecture at this time of the night? The man looks at him and says, That'd be my wife. Okay. Number five in the series says, I will provide for you. It's an awesome thing to think about that the fact that God meets all of our needs. There isn't a single thing that concerns us that doesn't concern him as well. Consider the discourse by Jesus in the book of Matthew. God provided for Adam and Eve and the children of Israel by night and day, and he will provide for us. So you got to think, you know, what has God done? Look up, look up over the roof of your head. The food that you have, you know, when you sit down to a meal. The clothes on your back. The neighbors that you have around you. Some good, some bad. But we still care for them. We thank a lot of them. And God cares for us. And he said he will provide for us. And you can tell I've not lost any meals or passed up many. But God cares about me and about us. All of us. The scripture comes from Matthew 5. So this is why I tell you, do not be worried about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive or about the clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth more than food? Isn't the body worth more than clothes? Look at the birds. Do they not, they don't plant uh, seeds, gather a harvest, and put it in barns? Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth more than birds? Can any of you live a bit longer by worrying about it? Not hardly. And why worry about clothes? Look how the wildflowers grow. They do not work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even King Solomon, with all his wealth and clothes, as beautiful as one of these flowers, it was God who clothed the wild grass, the grass that is here today and gone tomorrow, burned up in the oven. Uh, won't uh, he be uh, all the more sure to clothe you? What little faith you have. So do not start worrying. Where will my food come from, or my drink, or my clothes? These are the things that pagans are always concerned about. Your Father in Heaven knows that you need all these things. Instead, be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God and with what He requires of you. And He will provide you with all these other things. So do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There's no need to add to the troubles that today brings. Don't add to problems. Just try to get through the ones you've got. God will take care of them. You've got to have faith in Him, and you've got to believe in Him. Trust Him. Most of all, you've got to talk to Him every day. Right. Number six is, I will give you peace. There's nothing as good as knowing God's peace in our lives. In fact, it's something and sometimes astounds even the hardest of hearts. It causes others to wonder, what is it that, that causes us to be steadfast in the midst of trials? What, it's what causes them to stop sometimes and ask us about it. And sometimes they might even ask us how they too can have it. That's why the Bible tells us, always be ready to answer anyone who asks us about such things. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asketh you a reason of the hop that is in you with the uh, meekness of fear. Let's take a look at some of the great promises God made uh, concerning our peace. And the peace of God, 
which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts mine through Christ Jesus. That came from Philippians. Therefore, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That came from Romans. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That come from John. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is strayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. That come from Isaiah. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to in, uh, interpret of mercy and good fruits without uh, partiality and without hypocrisy. That come from James. All right. Number seven is I will always love you. If there's one thing we can be sure of, it's that God loves us and it's never ending. His love for us is never ending. People sometimes find it harder to accept that love, his love, than will ever be of learning about it. It's an abundant to them. He promised he will answer us because he is walking close with us. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, all you have to do is pray. Jesus said, you know, I will always love you. And to prove that love, Jesus, and that promise that he made to us, he sent his son. Jesus Christ, a man that was on earth for only 33 years, but he made more of an impact than anyone that, that could ever be. And all he ever showed was love. And what happened? We will sin, and us together, we treated him like he was a dog. We didn't believe anything, even though he showed us miracles he did. He raised the dead, he made the lame walk, the deaf talk. I mean... What else could he show us, give us? But he went to the cross for us, for our sins. He died on that cross. And he rose again three days later for us. Because during that time, he took our sin to hell, busted hell wide open with those sins. And he's still taking them today. All we have to do is call on the Lord, I've made another bad one. I need your help. He will forgive us. And to sum up these seven uh, things, uh, the first one says, I'll be with you. God has always been with us. He walked with Adam in the garden. He has never walked behind him. He always walked in front of him. And he'll walk in front of us also. The second one is, I will protect you. Look around at today's world. God protects us every day. All you have to do is turn the television on. You'll see what he's protecting us from. I will be your strength. God will always give us strength to fight our battles. I will answer you. God's work. God works at his own time and speed, but he always gives us an answer. Might not be the answer we want. Might not be in the time frame that we want. But he always answers us. He loves us for it. And number five, I will provide for you. God will supply all of our needs just as the birds in the air. They didn't plant crops or raise food or anything, but God takes care of them. God takes care of us the same way he provides for us. All we have to do is believe in him and trust in him. And if you remember the first commandment, love uh, your God. With all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second one Jesus said was, Love your neighbor as yourself. Number six, I will give you peace. Look back through your life, the good times and the bad. No matter what happens, we can call on God. He will comfort us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. 23rd Psalm, read it. And break it down in parts, each section. And you understand God's love for us. That he will give us peace. And I will always love you. Number seven. He loved us before we were born. He loved us after our birth. 
and he wants us to be with him in heaven. John 3.16 is the one that uh, says that for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. For those who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this, for this series, and we thank you for the information that come out that maybe it will touch someone's heart and someone will pick up a Bible and read your word and believe in you and trust in you and love you just as we do. In your precious name we pray. Amen.